to a Hope for Salvation broadcast, Hope Evangelistic Church. I'm Brother Paul. Amen. As you listen to this message today, put your boots on. Amen. We we got a ride that we have to do. But in in the meantime, if you want to look at some of the, the, the messages that we have or find out more about Hope Evangelistic Church, check out our check out our website, hopeevangelistic.org. And you can go out to the YouTube uh, channel and look at, uh, look up Hope Evangelistic under YouTube.com. It's YouTube.com slash at Hope Evangelistic. That's the way it's supposed to be. All right. Let's get into the message. Amen. Amen. John 5, 15. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Amen. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him, because he had done the, these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worker hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but he said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that, he, that you may marvel. For as the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Amen. Amen. This morning, amen, as the scripture has been read in your hearing, amen, we we want to take a little time and explain where, where, where Jesus is in this, in this passage. And Jesus is, 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 is the man that, 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 had, that had been healed on the Sabbath day. Uh, the Pharisees was always getting on him about working on the Sabbath day. Well, the man got healed. He picked up his bed and walked. Amen. And and Jesus told the man, go and sin no more. Otherwise, a worse thing will come unto you. And so here we go. And then... The, 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 the Jews sought to persecute Jesus and wanted to slay him because he had healed somebody on the Sabbath. You know, we can, we can get pretty wicked. And so in the 17th verse, we pick it up. It says, but Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto, and I work. <laughs> huh? Huh? Jesus said, God the Father works on the Sabbath, and I work on the Sabbath. Hmm? That's, that, that's good to know that, that God don't take Sunday off. Hmm? God don't take Saturday off. Hello? Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because not only had he broken the Sabbath, but he said that God was his Father. Hmm? Making himself equal with God. So now... They were already mad for him working, working on the on the Sabbath day. Now he said he he has blas They say he has blasphemed, and he's the son of God, making himself God. So they really want to kill him. Just wasn't time. <laughs> then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son of Man can do nothing of himself. For well, whatever he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these things also doeth the Son likewise. And I want to start right there at the 19th verse because that's the message for today. Verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also do the Son also. Does the Son also. 
Okay? So that 19th verse is where we're going to take off at. And if you look at it, you'll understand this message. Hmm? Look deeper into that. And, and, and let's, let's look at this. Hmm? This is a message to and for preachers. A message to and for preachers. Amen. Amen, lights. Amen, lights. A message to and for preachers. Amen. 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 A message to a message to and for our preachers. Amen. John 5, 19. Verily I say unto you that the Son can do nothing of himself, but whatsoever he seeth the Father do, what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son. Now, I read that a couple of times because I want you to get what I'm, where I'm at. Just like Jesus had to obey the Father, when he was on this earth. We're on this earth now. And we have the Holy Spirit in us. And we must obey. What the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. Now. It's one thing for me to say that to a Christian. But it's another thing for me to say that to a preacher. And I'm preaching to preachers this morning. Which means I'm preaching to myself. Hello. Preaching to myself. The son can do nothing. Or I can do nothing. Unless the Holy Spirit is directing me. I can't do my own thing. Hello, somebody. I can't do my own thing and, and, and expect God to bless it. I, I, I can't make up my own messages and ask God to bless my messages. When, 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 when I have to be dependent on the Holy Ghost to give me the message. I, can't, I have to be dependent on the Holy Spirit to give me everything. He has to lead me. He has to guide me into all truths. What are you saying, Brother Paul? I'm saying that the church world right now is in, is, is in turmoil. And the church world is in turmoil not because the world is so bad. The church world is in turmoil because the leadership is bad. Totally. I'm not against big churches, I'm not against small churches, I'm not against medium-sized churches, I'm not against any, any church or the size of the church or who's, who is running the church. What I'm trying to say is we need to be doing it God's way. And the only way we're going to be able to do it God's way is to do it God's way. Hello? And what is God's way? That we as preachers, that we give ourselves totally over to Him. Amen. Amen. The, 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 this morning I was worshiping and, and God gave me this message. This morning. This is, this is, this is a tremendous thing that, 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 that we need to learn to take time Again, some of y'all, some of y'all know you started out doing good. You spent, you spent precious time in front of God for for your members. You prayed for every member every day. You 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 wanted to make sure your message was right. You studied. You prayed. You prayed in the spirit. You did all of those things, and yet somewhere along the line, we've let some of these things slip. Hmm. Somewhere along the line, we've let these things slip. And that's where I'm at today. I'm not going to be up before you all day. But I am going to give you what God, what thus says the Lord. Hmm? We, we as preachers, we need to get back to the old landmark. We need to learn to lay before God all over again. Some people think that, that, that because the, 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 the crowd or the congregation amens you, they think that because the congregation is amening that you're doing a good job. But, I, but I've come to realize in, 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 my, in, in my pastorate that, 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 that just because somebody's amening you don't mean nothing. Hmm? Just because you get the approval of the preacher, of the people in the, poor, in the pews, that don't mean nothing. Just because the the, 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 the the elders behind you are pushing you on and amening you, your amen corner is getting big, that don't mean nothing. 
It's between you and the Lord. Hello. And I've learned to do some things. I've learned to, to, to hear from God before I preach. And I've learned to hear from God after I preach. Because I want to know, have I done everything you told me to do? Have I said what you wanted said? Hello, I, 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 I want to I, I wanna, I wanna have that time with God before I turn it over. Before I give a, 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 a gospel presentation. Hello, what are you saying, Brother Paul? I'm saying it takes time with God to do things. Hello, and, 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 and I'm going to say something else too. If people want people to recognize them as pastors. People want them to recognize the, the spirit that's on them. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is in you, but that don't necessarily mean that the Holy Spirit is guiding you. Hello, he's trying to guide you if you will let him. Hmm? And people can sense the Holy Spirit on you, but that's not your approval. Your approval comes from God. Only from God. See, if the Son can do nothing of Himself, you can do nothing without the Spirit. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't be doing anything. What did you say, Brother Paul? I said if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't be doing anything. I know that, 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 that in, in this world, a lot of people... And, and they're they're in leadership, and 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 guess what? The 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 they're pastors. They have decent congregations, but they're using business models. Hmm. Hello. Not biblical models. Not the guidance of the Holy Spirit, but 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 business models. I'm a businessman. I know what I'm talking about. I recognize it. I see it. Hello. What are you saying, Brother Paul? I'm saying that, that, that we need our dependence to be on God. Mm -hmm. I don't care if somebody say I can preach or I can't preach. I want to hear from God. God, somebody may say you can't preach. And I say, well, that's okay. But am I pleasing God? Somebody might say you're doing a great job. And then I want to know, am I pleasing God? Regardless of whether it's pro or con, I want to know from God, am I doing a good job? Hmm? Hello? Come on. That, that's why some of y'all in trouble on your job. Because the people around you on your job, your co-workers, are telling you you're doing a good job. But then again, when it's time for you to sit before the boss and he evaluates you, he tells you you ain't doing a good job. <laughs> you're listening to the wrong people. And preachers are listening to the wrong people. They think the elders behind them are telling them the truth. Now, it's farther from the truth. If you, if you drop dead today or tomorrow, they will be ready to take your place. Hello? Come on here. What are you trying to get across to me, Brother Paul? Where did I go wrong? You stopped spending quality time with God. That's where you went wrong. You stopped spending the quality time with God. Hmm? Brother Paul, you, 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 you're pretty hard. No, that's not hard at all. Every preacher should spend quality time with God. Every day, not just on Sunday. Hello? You can't do it all on Saturday and get ready for Sunday. Hello? You, you have to have a daily walk. We're going to tell somebody, we're going to tell our congregants that, that, that they need to, 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 to spend time with God every day. And then you don't spend time with God every day. Hello? Too busy. Too busy networking. Hello, business model. Networking from church to church. We calling it fellowships. Hmm? All the things that but 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 I remember one time we were we we were trying to do something. I think we were trying to ordain some deacons and and not in my church but in another church and, and we were trying and couldn't find couldn't find space in the schedule because we had so many fellowships. Hello? What are you saying, Brother Paul? Don't you, are, are you serious? I'm serious because we are doing everything but what God said to do. God didn't, and the Great Commission doesn't tell us to do but two things, reach them and teach them. Hmm? Huh? 
evangelize the world, evangelize your neighborhood, evangelize, and then turn around and disciple them and so that they can turn around and go out and evangelize. Hello, you got to train them up. Reach them and teach them. Reach them and teach them. Hello? That's what God wants. We're doing everything but what God wants. I believe that the time is coming, and and I and I said this one, one somewhere preaching somewhere, and 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 I'm gonna say it again. There's been a change in the spirit. There's been a change in the spirit. Something is getting ready to happen, and I'm giving fair warning to every preacher right now. You better seek God's face. You better seek God's face. You better find out, God, what is it you want me to do? Hmm? What is it that you want me to do? Because you could be taking up a whole lot of your time doing things that don't matter to God. I, 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 those are dead works. Works that's going to be burned up. Your works you don't get credit for. You don't get credit for doing what you want to do. It might have been a good thing. But you get credit for doing what God would have you to do. Only if you do what God would have you to do will you get credit in heaven for it. You might get credit down here. The news people may even pick up on such a great job you're doing. But if God has not told you to do it, it, it don't count. You don't, get, you don't get credit for doing secretarial work on your job if you're an engineer. Hello, come on here. That don't make sense. Same thing, same thing with God. If God didn't tell you to do what you're doing, then how, how are you going to expect to be rewarded? Hmm? Let, me, let, me, let, let me say this to, to those over 65. Because I know, I know it's, it was, it's, it's been a battle. I noticed this, and I believe, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. For he showed it to me and some of the preachers that was older than me. And, and now I see it. I saw it. So when it started happening to me, I recognized it. Hmm? And I was able to avoid it. But let me tell you something. When you get around 65, you start looking at your accomplishments. What I've done. Hmm? Preachers do the same thing. But let me tell you something. When you get to heaven and, and, and you, you put your accomplishments list up beside God's accomplishments list, it ain't going to be the same. <laughs> so you're going to be a little disappointed. Your list is not going to measure up to what God's list is. And God's going to say, this is what you accomplished. But this is what I told you to do. And the list of what I told you to do is longer than the list that you accomplished. But the list that you have is longer than the list of things I wanted you to do. But I couldn't get you to do them because why? Because you were doing your own thing. You're so busy doing your thing, you can't do God's thing. See, church is about doing God's thing. Oh, God, help me. Help me, somebody. Let's read 19 and go into 20. Verily I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the Father do, what things soever he doeth, these are the things he, that the Son is doing likewise. Same thing. Whatever God tells us to do, that's what we should do. Just like Jesus. Jesus father the Father. We should father the Father. Follow the Father. For the Father loveth the Son. And showeth him all things himself that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. And that's what, what God is. God wants to take the church world and show the world what he's, who he really is. Hello? He wants to show the world, the people that are not saved, who he really is. Who are he going to use? He's going he gonna to use the preachers to train the church. Hello? He's going to use the preachers to train the church to show the world what he's doing that the church, that the world may marvel. But we don't see it like that. We got our own desires. We got our own plans. And those are the things that's hindering the work of God in the earth realm. Hmm? 
See, the earth realm, the earth realm right now is, is very polluted. And that pollution is creeping into the church. The pollution from the world is creeping into the church. We're watering down the gospel message. We're watering down the Bible. Hello, we're doing some things that God, God got on Israel about in the Old Testament. Now we see it has creeped in. Come on here. Some, some of the stuff that's going on has been caused by what? Prosperity. The church is growing. The church is doing good. The church is doing better than it's ever doing. The, the, they've been able to give me a better salary. I'm doing all right. They bought me a car. They bought me a house. I'm doing better. I'm doing better than I've ever done. Oh, but let me tell you something. You can't sit back in ease because things are going good. You have to let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. There's more to be done. That's not the end all of what church is about. Whether or not you have a good salary preacher, whether or not you drive a decent car preacher, whether or not you have a, big, a bigger building, what you would call a comfortable uh, uh, amount of people to manage. Hello. God loves us and he wants to do something to, to show the world where, where he's coming from. Let me ask you this question, and I, and I know I'm preaching to preachers, but, let, but I want you to hear what I got to say. If a sinner looks at you, how much of God would he see? If a sinner looks at you, would he be able to say, that's a Christian, he looks like Christ. He's doing the things that Christ is doing. If your neighbor looks at you, would he be able to say he's a Christian because he looks like Christ? Not physically, but in the way he carries himself, in his attitude, in the things that he do. Come on here. Will your neighbors be able to say that you are a Christian because of the work that you're doing? Hello, let's make it let's bring it on home. Will your family be able to say, come on here because you, they live under the same roof with you. Will your family say, he's a Christian? Hmm? Will your family say that he, he, he's, he's, he's walking like Christ walked in the earth? Hmm? Come on, preachers. I want you to hear what I got to say. Jesus said it like this, For the Father loveth the Son, and show him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. He's talking to the, to the Pharisee. He's talking to unsaved folk. And this is what he wants the unsaved folk to marvel, so that they can come under conviction and know for true there is a living God. Hello? Ah. Uh. 21, for as the Father raised up the dead and quickened the even so them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. We're not seeing those kind of miracles. We're not seeing people, people, people getting saved, even, even quicken, quicken, make alive. Just that's bringing somebody from unsaved to saved, or it could be somebody that died by being resurrected to life. Either way. Why are we not seeing all of these things in abundance? Most churches are having transfers. They're not having converts. They're having transfers. They're, they're transferring from church to church to church. Hmm? Well, what are you saying, Brother Paul? I'm saying this is a message to preachers. Two preachers is four preachers and it's by a preacher. Amen. Hmm? Let, 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 let me say this too because I wrote down some things I got to say. Hmm. The moment you started helping God out in your church, in your ministry, listen to me. The moment you started helping God out in your ministry was the moment he took his hands off of you. Hmm. Oh, the Holy Spirit is still in there. But he, he's not going to share his glory with you. Huh? He's not, he's not, he's not going to share. He wants it all. Hmm. The moment you start taking, ta 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 doing what you want.
want to do instead of what the Holy Spirit wanted you to do. That was the moment he took his hands off of you. And guess what? You went on in the name of Jesus. You went on in the name of Jesus doing it your way, but not the Holy Spirit's way. Ah. Oh. Listen, and I got this from Ed Wardle when, oh, uh, at the dinner a couple of weeks ago. He made a statement that stuck, stuck with me. And, uh, and, 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 and I'm going to just sh share it briefly. Being in Christ is like being in the, a baby being in the mother's womb. What are you saying, Brother Paul? Being in Christ is like being everything we need is in, 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 in Christ. Everything a baby needs is in the mother, in the mother's womb. He gets everything. He's totally dependent upon that mother. Guess what? We're totally dependent upon the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us into all truth. But he said that in his word in John 16, that that's what he would do. That just like Jesus, Jesus said the things that God showed, that, 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 that God the Father showed him, he do it. Hmm? The Bible says in 16 John that, 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 that he, would show, he would take from God and show it unto us. The same situation. We have the same setup that Jesus has. We have the same makeup that Jesus has. Come on here, Brother Paul. Say it again. What we have going on is the Holy Spirit inside of man just like Jesus was. Jesus had the Spirit without measure, but we have the same Holy Spirit. We have the same Holy Spirit, and He wants to get loose in some people. Hmm? We, 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 we need an overhaul. Hello? We, we, need, we need to break down everything. We need to consider ourselves over again, preachers. We need to look at ourselves again and say, is this what God wants me to do? Is this... Now, am I where God want me to be? Am I doing what God would have me to do? Hmm? See, when Jesus, Jesus said it like this, when I put my sheep forth, I go before them. He's not following you. If you out in front of Jesus, he's not following you. He's not, but he will lead you and he will guide you, but he will not follow you. <laughs> Hello? What did you say? You heard me. He, Jesus ain't following nobody. You follow him. He don't follow you. When you get ahead of God, you've gotten ahead of, 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 of the person and you're on your own. Hello? But if you stay in the cut, if you stay in the cut and, 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 and you follow Jesus, you are following him, putting his sheep forth. Talking about preachers. He's putting the preachers forth. And he's going before them. He's leading them. He's guiding them. Oh, Brother Paul. Hmm. But we're in Christ. And we're totally dependent on him. We must abide in Christ. Hmm? Without Jesus, we can do nothing. Without the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. What are you saying, Brother Paul? I've already said what I had to say. We need the Holy Spirit. We need to follow the Holy Spirit. We need to give time to the Holy Spirit. If nothing else, if you hear, if you don't hear nothing else, I'm saying, give God more time. Give Him more time. Give Him time. Listen for the voice. Hear what the Spirit is say do and do it. What else you got to say, Brother Paul? I, I say, I'll say what Jesus said when He first took it. He, he first started His ministry. I'll say what John the Baptist said when He first started His ministry. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. If we don't turn preachers from our wicked ways, we'll be judged just like, just like Israel was judged. The Holy Spirit is, I know we're in grace. I know we're, I, I know we're in, in, in a new era. 
But God wants his work to get done on the earth. And he's looking for the leadership in the church to do it. The preachers. I ain't, I ain't giving all these titles that we got now. The preachers. Hello. The preachers. God holds us accountable. He holds us responsible for the work that goes on. Hear the voice of the Lord and do what the Lord tells you to do. Hear the Lord's voice and obey. Hmm? I can't make it any plainer. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from your disobedience. Turn from the things you're doing wrong. Get back right with God. Do what God would have you to do. Even if it means giving up what you're doing now and going back. If you may have to go back to something. Hello, I'm here. I'm here. I hear you. I hear you. You may have to go back to something. You may have to go somewhere you left that you didn't want to, that you did, God didn't tell you to leave. Hello? You may have to do some things that, that, that's not comfortable, that make you have to not only repent, but make you have to humble yourself. Hmm? Humble yourself and do what thus says the Lord. I believe God is moving. And he's moving in a mighty way right now. He's moving in a mighty way right now. Hear the voice of the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Time, there is a different atmosphere now. There is something going on. There is something happening. You better hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Because... But let me tell you something, and this has been my experience. This has been my experience. When, when there is a change in, in, the, in the realm of the spirit, in the flow of the spirit, in the earth realm, people start going home. Preachers start going home. Preachers' wives start going home. Hmm? What are you saying, Brother Paul? If you're not doing what God would have you to do, why should he leave you here? Hmm? Messing up his work. Whew. Repent of your sins and ask Jesus to help you to get where you need to be. The Holy Spirit is in you. He'll help you. Now, I'm checking. I'm, I'm, I'm doing. I'm doing my my afterwards. Hmm. I hear what you say. I, I I hear. I hear what the spirit speaks to me. Hello. Hey, Paul. All right. Here we go. Jesus, even though I preach this message to, to, to preachers, there are some that, 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 that have called, been called to preach, and then there are some that's just preaching. You need to repent and, and give your heart to Jesus Christ. I don't care what title you carry. You can call yourself a preacher, bishop, uh, apostle. I don't care who you are. You need to be saved. Hmm? You need to be saved. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from your sin. And accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Hmm? Even if you're hearing this message, you're not a preacher. Repent of your sins and ask Jesus to come into your heart and save your soul. Repent of your sins and believe the gospel message that Jesus Christ paid the penalty for your sins that you might be saved. Do what needs to be done. Go ahead, pray, ask the Lord and believe the gospel message. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He fulfilled the sin. He fulfilled the law. Hmm? He lived in his flesh without even sinning. He paid the penalty for your sins, but his blood, 
His blood that we shed washed away all of our sins. He arose on the third day. Hmm? He's now sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. The gospel message. Believe the gospel message and repent of your sins and open, open up your heart and ask Jesus to come into your heart and to save your soul.